Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with uh, BoatingTechTalks.com. Uh, so now that maybe you've decided that you're wanting to go ahead and install a Victron Servo um, black box or GX on uh, your boat, the question is you've thinking about getting the kit and now you want to know how do you go about putting it together. Well, uh, let's talk about first things first. So generally this black box is gonna be located near your batteries. It doesn't have to be super close to your batteries, uh, but relatively close to your batteries um, because you're gonna wanna install a smart shunt definitely close to your batteries, and this is your house batteries. And remember, a shunt, and we've got lots of videos on this, a shunt needs to capture all the current going in and out of your batteries. For some of us, that's easy to install because the boat's wired like that. But for other ones, it might be a challenge where you need to make sure that this choke point, this one single device, this smart shunt, sees all the current going in and out the batteries. So um, it's generally going to be installed between uh, the battery negative terminal on the house and your negative distribution. And that's a way to guarantee that all the current going in, both charging and discharge, is seen by that smart shunt. The smart shunt is going to connect back to the servo. So it's going to be sharing that information. That's what's going to allow you to be able to see um, on Bluetooth what's happening on the smart shunt. And also, by the way, if you connect a Touch 50 or Touch 70 screen, you'll be able to see that as well. So the Touch 50 and Touch 70 screen is where you might want to install that in a place that is easily accessible. You don't want to hide it deep in the bowels of your boat where you're not seeing. It's really almost sort of like a command control center for everything related potentially to your electrical system. So have the Touch 50 be in a place that obviously you can run a cable in between the Touch 50 and 70 to the servo, but have it in a place that is going to be conveniently located so that you can have a look all the time, at least once a day or more, to see it's sort of like looking at your fuel gauge in your car while you're driving. You should look at your fuel gauge relatively often. So you're going to want to mount that Touch 50 or 70 screen in a place that's convenient for you where it's not too much of a headache, headache to go out and actually see whatever numbers are being presented on that. And then the other thing, too, is you're going to be looking. There's multiple things you can be connecting. You might be connecting temp sensors, uh, tank sensors. You might be connecting uh, solar controllers to this. You might be connecting, for example, on my boat, um, a USB uh, GPS connected. So you want to find a location where this servo, it's almost sort of like your brain now, is going to be getting all these different inputs. And you don't want to mount it too close to the batteries where everything else. So maybe sometimes it's in between, you know, the batteries and the Touch 50, right, where all your inputs are going to come from. So you got to think about how far are you going to dream. And if you're going to keep it as simple as just a battery monitor or a servo and a touch, well, then it makes it a little bit easier. Like, okay, I'm not going to be adding a lot more features. So the servo can be close, relatively close to where the inverter charger would be, where my batteries are, and then I'll run a longer cable between the touch and the servo. So those are sort of the things that you've got to think about. Um, it's not, I think that do it yourself is a tricky thing. It all depends, right? Um, but if one goes slowly and tries to answer their questions before starting, right? So as we all know with the do it yourself, it's all about prep work and then the doing. So if you're probably educating yourself here. You're educating. There's a lot more information out there. It's definitely in the realm of doable. Uh, the question is, do you have the time to do it? And are you patient enough to do it the right way? Because remember, if you're monitoring wrong information, the servo is only going to be sharing wrong information. So it's very important to make sure that your smart shunt is properly wired because that's where you're going to be getting a lot of your data. Again, if any of you have tips to share or questions, please post them down below and let us know how this servo uh, monitoring kit is working out for you. Thanks for watching. So if you're curious again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.